Choice and Values The traditional model is based on a transcendent domain of the deity. The experiential domain is based on scriptures, ecclesiastical hierarchy, authority, morality, ethics, and legality. In the ontological model, the transcendent domain is nothingness and death, and the experiential domain is choice, possibility, integrity, and authenticity. We have presented a rationale for choice and values that retains the authenticity and integrity of an individual's life. The advantage of this model is that it gives unity to a life as a whole without requiring submission to a more or less arbitrary external authority. To achieve this wholeness, we still require to relate our life to something transcendent, beyond or outside itself. But in this case, it is related to something that is one's very own, that is, to death. The ontological model presented herein is firmly rooted in philosophical rigor, yet fully compatible with postmodern sensibilities. However, it would be premature to conclude that we advocate nihilism or atheism. The purpose of the spiritual agnosticism of being in the world is to create an experiential ontological platform free from theological complexities. Our phenomenological approach provides a new model for theism grounded in direct personal experience of the Supreme instead of authority. Succeeding parts of Friend of the Heart will develop this model in detail. We have seen through a methodical, phenomenological, ontological analysis of our default being in the world that the traditional approach to choice and values involves the superimposition of external authority upon our existential choice. While this approach may be convenient for practical purposes, it subjects human beings to objectification. The current form of corporate organization in society, historically derived from ecclesiastical hierarchy, tends to treat persons as objects limiting their being and choices. Hierarchy has metastasized throughout society in the form of corporate organizations until today it compromises individual choice as never before. But today's technology obviates the need for rigid hierarchies in every conceivable application. Ad hoc flat networks based on shared interests are now within everyone's experience and reach. The real issue here is not social, but personal. Although we are all human beings, ontology, the science of beingness, is almost unknown to people in general. Instead, the idle talk of the world concentrates on having, doing, feeling, thinking, or at best, knowing. These inferior parts of our being are often conflated with or substituted for actual being. For example, the answer to the question, what do you want to be when you grow up, is most often expressed in terms of having or doing instead of actual being. The value of the various parts of our beingness to our whole being is shown in the figure Knowing, thinking, feeling, doing, and having are certainly parts or functions of our being, but they are clearly not our whole individuality. The part is never equal in value or function to the whole. Thus, nothing can substitute for developing the integrity of our being by the phenomenological process discussed herein. The personal satisfaction and increased performance experienced by developing integrity as wholeness of being can only be provided by authentic being in its completeness. The value of this process and the resulting state of being integrity can be fully appreciated only by experience. However, in general, the ontological viewpoint values internal states above externalities of any kind. 
One may certainly question the validity and practicality of a philosophy that seems to allow the individual completely free choice in every respect. There is no question that completely unfettered freedom of choice can be a two-edged sword. There is always a possibility that these powerful conceptual tools and processes could be misused for nefarious purposes. But we are hardly libertarians or anarchists. Being in the world is only the first step of a long, complex journey from ordinary, everyday, unauthentic being to complete self-realization of our eternal identity. In Call of the Friend, we continue our exploration of the ontological phenomenological process, addressing concerns such as the knowledge of right and wrong, guilt, conscience, and how we can actualize this process to attain integrity and authentic being.